And Sarah laughs to herself. And she says, I'm worn out. My Lord is old. And I'm going to have sexual intimacy. And I'm going to have a kid. No way. And then one of the men, and, and the scripture actually says it's the Lord, because this is a, either an appearance of the Lord or, or the voice of the Lord. But it says, the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I'm old? And then ask this question, is anything too hard for the Lord? Now, Sarah did some major growing up because Sarah's faith grew. I think she must have been really challenged by that comment. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Well, the answer was no. She gave birth to Isaac within the year. You've got a woman of God who is persistently seeking God for a son. And God doesn't really say no. God says, not yet. And God waited until God's timing. And we don't know what all was involved in God's timing, but the Hebrew to me reads like part of it is the heart of Hannah. Hannah had to get into that position where she said, Father, God, if you give me this child, I dedicate him back to you. I will rear him to be yours. And once her attitude was right for that mothering and the other circumstances that may not be referenced in scripture were right, at the right time, she gets pregnant and that prayer gets answered, yes. So now, Jesus comes in and he's teaching scripture in the house of Mary and Martha. And we can assume that Lazarus, the brother, and a number of other men were in there listening to the teaching. By the way, even in synagogues, the women weren't allowed to sit with the men in the studious part. They had to separate off. So Martha is in the kitchen doing the right things, while Mary has the audacity to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn Scripture. So when Martha comes in and tells Jesus, what are you doing? Why are you letting her do this? She doesn't need to be here. She needs to be back with me. Martha is trying to relegate her sister Mary to a position of uh, just basically working in the kitchen and doing what she perceived the woman's role to do and to be. Jesus was not that way. Uh, Jesus was, was not denigrating at all to women. In fact, Jesus says that Mary taking time to learn the Torah and the law, to learn to understand God's scriptures was a good thing and not something that Martha needed to be bothering Martha over. In fact, Martha needed to learn to follow Mary's footsteps. In the New Testament, Rahab the harlot, who lies to keep safe the spies, is heralded as being a woman of faith. She's held up as an example. What? You may be saying, a lying prostitute? Yes, because within the measure of her life and what she was doing, she heard about the Lord. She heard about what he did, and she trusted that he would keep her safe. And that's what faith is. Faith isn't a perfect life. Faith isn't having done everything right. Faith is coming to God when you encounter God and saying, I trust you to take care of me. But um, Deborah is a prophetess, which means she hears from God and is able to talk about God and what God sees as important. She not only hears the voice of God, but Deborah is also a judge. Now, here's the key. This is at a time where Israel has come into the promised land, not taken it all over, but they don't have any kings yet. And so they're ruled by judges. It's just the, the government structure. 
Deborah is a judge at a time where Sisera, a foreign king, has invaded Israel and invaded successfully because Israel was chasing after idols. And God told him from the get-go, from Deuteronomy 28, if you go after idols, I'll let the idols protect you. So they had no protection because the idols aren't real. So Deborah stands up and calls the people to repent. And in the process of calling them to repent is going to figure out how to get rid of the invading king. So Now, this is an interesting story to me because it tells me in the midst of drama, in the midst of political turmoil, in the midst of everything, we people are called to hear the word of God. And we can trust that God has everything under control. And frankly, I don't fear a foreign invader and I don't fear a local invader. I don't fear a, an elected president. I don't fear an unelected president. I don't fear any of that. I fear the Lord and I want to seek to follow him in the nitty gritty daily of my life.